Let's talk about the word adventure, because the medieval meaning of the term is a little bit more multifaceted than the modern meaning. This greater range of meaning is evident from even a glance at the Middle English Dictionary's entry for the word. We have about half a dozen definitions here. The term can mean fate, fortune, chance, one's lot or destiny, something that happens, an event, an occurrence, an experience, even an accident. Danger, jeopardy, risk, eventure, an enterprise, a nightly quest, a marvellous thing, a wonder, a miracle, or a tale of adventures, an account of marvellous things. Now, danger, risk, an enterprise, a quest, that's all familiar territory to us, but I'd like to focus on the first two parts of that definition. The parts that emphasise chance, fate, fortune, even accident. This conjunction of a dangerous quest and chance is very characteristic of medieval romance, and it speaks to one of the major features of the romance hero. Heroes in medieval romance tend to be reactive rather than proactive. Events happen to them and they respond. This chance dimension of knightly adventure is very evident in the language that medieval authors use when they're writing romance. Take this example from Thomas Mallory's Mort d'Arthur. The knight Balin resolves to continue on his journey. Balin decides that regardless of what adventure shall fall to me, be it life or death, I will take the adventure that shall come to me. So adventures fall to the hero or come to the hero in romance, and sometimes this is in fairly dramatic form, like the sudden entry out of the blue of the Green Knight at Arthur's feast at the beginning of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. The hero can of course make choices, he can decide whether to accept the quest, he can make decisions along the way, but he rarely has the opportunity to decide how events themselves fall to him. So there's an interesting sense here of story shaping the hero rather than the hero shaping the story. And that might seem to cut knights down to size somewhat, but story and hero are very interdependent in romance. Romance settings, after all, are positively engineered, not just to test the hero, but to prove him. And Eric Auerbach summarises this very well. He notes, The world of knightly proving is a world of adventure. It not only contains a practically uninterrupted series of adventures, more specifically, it contains nothing but the requisites of adventure. Nothing is found in it which is not either accessory or preparatory to an adventure. It is a world specifically created and designed to give the knight opportunity to prove himself. So like Balin, the knight in your average romance has to accept the adventure that falls to him seemingly by chance. Knights in romance are reactive rather than proactive, but that isn't to say that they are completely passive, far from it. By embracing the adventure and following it through to the end, the knight has the opportunity to prove his chivalric prowess to the world.